Hi there and welcome into the introduction tutorial of AMG Mesh Blend. AMG Mesh Blend is a kit bash library tool that basically allows you to manage your blending assets and floating assets. Before going into what each category does, we're simply going to make an overview of the uh, different components of our user interface. The first component is the default angle drop down menu. This one contains a bunch of different angles that you can choose to apply on your assets when they are imported. And you also have a custom angle parameter that you can adjust with a slider by scrolling uh, the mouse wheel or simply adding values manually. The other option is simply a thumbnail sizing uh, menu, drop down menu, sorry that has a bunch of uh, options but not really that useful to us actually I'm gonna reload the UI the refresh that you're seeing here pretty much does that reload so if you set a different angle and you click on refresh it's pretty much gonna set everything uh, to uh, default settings the next option is the add asset to blending library and uh, right now we're into the blending assets category if we go into if we go into the uh, floating assets it's gonna change to add asset to floating library and uh, I'm not really gonna go through how everything works in here to do that you can simply click on how blending works you have these options over here and uh, how floating works too. This one is actually floating. And let me refresh the UI. This one is actually blending. You have a bunch of pages that explains the whole process and a lot of examples just to show you where the tool works and where it doesn't work. Now, to import an asset, the process is actually really simple. Simply select a few faces, click on one of the assets, and done. You can have multiple selections, one selection, or even irregular selections like so. And these irregular selections sometimes create distortions, like in here, but they can be quickly fixed to solve the issue. But nonetheless, I really recommend always try to work with 2x2 uh, two two, uh, grids if the asset is of that type and uh, if it's some kind of long asset that requires a bunch of poly strips like here, you can use this one too. There you go. And the uh, floating assets menu is actually pretty much the same thing except that what it does basically is just place the assets on top of the uh, geometry right here now how do you actually import an asset into this library well it's actually pretty simple I have an asset here that can be used uh, fairly well in the uh, blending category and the other one which is really made for the floating category. So to add an asset into the blending category, we first need to make sure of a few things. The first thing is the pivot position. What I want to do is for these edges here, the borders, to blend with the silhouette of our target surface. So our pivot point needs to be right at that point too here like aligning on these faces basically once that's set up we simply we simply select these border edges and click on uh, add asset to library and the asset is going to be automatically added i think i've already added it a few times here but here it is and uh, to import the assets same thing select a bunch of faces click on the assets this one it wasn't actually this one it was the other one so let's do the same thing over here there you go voila 
and as you can see we didn't get any smoothing error on this one but we did get some on this surface right here and the reason behind this is that the bridging solution that I've built to deal, to deal with these issues doesn't work in every case so you still need to sometimes uh, maybe fix something here and there or uh, simply avoid using them on two angular surfaces but most of the time if the kit bash piece is made for that type of shape we're not really gonna have issues with uh, the blending so how do you actually import a new asset into your floating library same process pretty much but you don't have a border sometimes and in this case you need to select like an edge loop that is small not uh, too small like this but small enough when compared to the uh, scale of the object and uh, the reason behind this is because the, the way the, the algorithm is currently written basically uses these source edges to create the overall size or estimation size of the whole mesh and the smaller the size the more likely is it it is to catch the uh, size of the faces you're targeting and the size of the uh, actual mesh that you're targeting so to simply explain a thing just select this add asset to library and here it is let me actually delete it uh, for deleting an asset, simply control click on it and say yeah. Let's choose a better angle, maybe this one. Select the edges and save it to the library. So, the placement is the same process as the other ones. You basically come here. Did we actually... Let me check, make sure that our pivot... Yeah, the pivot is alright. So let's click on the asset, looks like the pivot was actually flipped or something. Set it back, set the pivot right here, remove the asset, put it back into our scene, and refresh the UI, and there we go. Now let's try to place it somewhere here. And here's our asset. And if we try again on the sphere, I think it should work. There we go. And these floaters actually are not combined with the source geometry. They are simply placed and you have the rotation coordinate of the average value of different faces, like so. So later on you can just come up and keep scaling them or changing the uh, position and so on. And that's pretty much it. The tool is actually really simple in, its, in the way it was written, but I really recommend you to check out the uh, different library options over here. Just to make sure that you, you have all the information on how assets works and when you're gonna meet errors and by the way I've got a lot of questions on uh, non-uniform surfaces when uh, using the tool and I'm gonna show you an example really quickly of how it actually works let me just create a non-uniform surface here maybe change this value something like 20 there we go this is broken enough for us to test okay so I'm gonna select just a bunch of faces over here and click randomly on any asset as you can see we have zero errors around the assets and the process actually is pretty streamlined you can keep on trying of course if you do something crazy like this <laughs> I think you're gonna get an error but let's try you never know It actually did just fine except we have a bunch of vertices here that are overlapping
and uh, I guess that's gonna be pretty much it for this tutorial. If you have any requests, don't hesitate to go into the uh, polycom thread in the description or email me on the email uh, in the description. Thank you for watching.